Okay, we're learning about the law of sines today, and we're trying some more examples of solving triangles completely using the law of sines. Remember, that means that you're given some data about the triangle, some uh, information about the lengths of some of the sides of the triangle, and the measures of some of the angles. And what you have to do is, first of all, figure out if there is a triangle that satisfies that data, or maybe if there's more than one, and then find, solve for all the other lengths of the sides and all the other measures of the angles in the triangle. So in this example, we're given a triangle, and it looks like we're given two angles and a side. So let me draw the triangle. Capital letters for the corners. And the sides, you use lowercase letters. It has to be opposite of the capital of the same letter. So that tells you where the, the uh, orientations of all the information that you're given. So we're given that A is 40 degrees. Uh, angle A is 40 degrees. Angle B is 110 degrees. So certainly the way I drew it is not to scale, because 110 would be an obtuse angle. It's bigger than 90 degrees. Um, and we're given that A has side length 7. Side A has length 7. So I fill in the information that I have. And I want to find out, first of all, are we going to have a solution here? So we're given here a side and then two angles of a triangle. So this is side, angle, angle. And the side is not between the angles. So that's why it's side, angle, angle, and not angle, side, angle. Um, and the thing you want to check there is whether the angles you've been given are legitimate. Do they add up to less than 180 degrees? Remember, we talked about that in the beginning of the lecture. When you're given certain pieces of information, how do you know if there's one solution or no solutions or two solutions? So inside angle, angle, you just check whether the angles add up to 180 degrees. In this case, 110 plus 40 is uh, 150. That's less than 180, so we haven't already exceeded the uh, angle limit for the triangle. So in that case, it has a unique solution. It has one solution. So there will be exactly one triangle satisfying the data we've been given. So that answers the first question. The trickier part is to use the law of sines to find all the, uh, the missing quantities here. So let me write down the law of sines. Sine A over little a is equal to sine B over little b and sine C over little c. So what do we know there? We know capital A, so we can find its sine very easily. We know capital B, and we know little a. Um, we can figure out capital C very quickly because we know two of the angles, it'll be easy to find the third one. So capital C is 110 minus 40, or sorry, it's 180 minus the two angles we're given, minus 40 and 110. So that's 180 minus 150, that's 30 degrees. So we can fill that in very quickly, capital C is 30 degrees. So we got sine of capital C. We, well, we can figure that out quickly. Uh, we need to find little b and little c, so we use the law of sines to find them. So sine a over little a is equal to sine b over little b. And I'm trying to solve for little b here, so I'll cross multiply. I get b sine a is equal to a sine b, or little b is equal to a sine capital B over capital A. And actually, I'm going to fill in, actually, before I cross multiply, I think I'll fill in the quantities that I know. So sine of capital A is 40, and little a is 7. And little b, I don't know, but capital B is 110. Now I'm going to cross multiply, and I get b is 7 sine 110 over sine 40. Remember to set your calculator to degree mode so you don't get strange answers because your calculator is thinking in terms of radians. So 
I'll work out 7 sine of 110 divided by sine of 40. And what I get there is approximately, I'm going to round it to 10.23. So that's the length of side B, 10.23. So we found all three angles, two of the sides. We just need to find side C. So again, I'm going to use the law of sine. Sine A over little a is sine of capital C over little c. Little a, we already said, was 40, or sorry, capital A, angle A is 40, little a is 7, and capital C, we figured out, is 30, and little c, we don't know, that's what we're solving for. So I'll cross multiply, and I get c is 7 sine 30 over sine 40. 30 is actually a common value. I do know what the sine is, but I, um, it's not really that useful here because I'm plugging, uh, certainly I don't know the sine of 40, so I'm plugging these numbers into my calculator anyway. 7 sine of 30 divided by the sine of 40 is approximately equal to 5.45. So let's recap what we needed to do there. We were given two angles and one side of a triangle. So I filled in everything I knew. Uh, that gave me a side angle angle configuration. It's not angle side angle because, um, because of the orientation of, wh of where everything was. Um, the side was not in between the two angles. It was outside the two angles. So we had side angle angle. And remember from the list at the beginning of the lecture, if you have side angle angle, you just have to check that the angles add up to less than 180, which they did, and then you know it has exactly one solution. Once you determine that, you know you're going to find one solution. Uh, it's quick to find the third angle because you know the angles add up to 180, and then you have to find the two missing sides. That takes a little more time, but they both come from the law of sines. You just write down the law of signs, you fill in the information that you do know, and then you solve for the missing side. And that worked to find both of those missing sides. So then we know all three sides of the triangle and all three angles, so we've completely solved the triangle.